My next guest is a cast member on SCTV. Uh, he's, of course, appeared in numerous films, including Bringing Down the House, the American Pie movies, and Waiting for Guffman. Beginning next Wednesday, you can see him in a mighty wind. Please welcome Eugene Levy. Too much love for one man. Hey, good night, everybody. That's it. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. You're Good to doing see you. very well. Let me follow this up. This is <laughs> the bringing down the house. This this film is a massive hit that you that you're in. A massive hit. Yeah, it is. It's uh, went through the roof. Hundred million dollars, and I uh, I was very excited when it hit a hundred million dollars. Right. But. Um, you know, then the news kind of became bittersweet in a way. Why because, is that? Well, I thought I was kind of, you know, business savvy. Mm-hmm. But I found out that the studio gets most of the money. <laughs> Not the hundred million doesn't go to you? Well, I was figuring on 45, 50 million when, when <laughs> right. I was there. You know, right, I thought right. the actors would get. I mean, what, what does the studio need the money for? Right. What is a place like... <laughs> Well, when, what uh, studio you know, well, is it? Disney, let's say. Right. Now right. they've got, you know, they've got Disney World, they got Disneyland, they got the cruise ships, they own a network. A <laughs> right. hundred million dollars to Disney, it's like tip money. Right. You know, it's nothing to it's them. Money they, yeah. So, so if I was running the studio, I would give uh, the money to the actors because you know these are the people that it's tough being an actor. You have to have sometimes you have to have a, a second job. Right. You know, just just to just to kind just to kind of get get through. Do you have I a mean, second job? Uh, I think, you know, we all kind of, you know, have second jobs. I... You seem ashamed I, about it. I, no, I'm very, I'm very proud. And no matter, <laughs> you know, no matter how well you think you do in the business, you, you, this is the actor's plate. Right. Steve Martin. Yeah. He has a major art collection. Yeah. Multi-million dollar art collection. Now, do you think he got this collection just for money that he made from, from acting in movies? I assumed he had, no. The man waits tables. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good, apparently. That's you know, a lot of money. Uh, anyway, it's exciting, but you know, I don't think it's fair. Right. Well, I'm sure you'll, they'll, they'll reconsider when they see this interview. Well, maybe. Um, <laughs> uh, a Mighty Wind documentary. Yeah. Mo a mockumentary, <clears throat> I'll call it. Okay, uh, I won't do that. Mockumentary, interesting word. Yes. I took mock and documentary, and I, I said <laughs> mockumentary. So it's a subject that we actually mock we hold up to ridicule uh maybe that, that could that could be the thing we yeah. actually have great affection yeah for this subject right um, and the this, subject is folk, the, folk the subject is folk singers it's uh it's a movie about uh, folk singers it's about kind of a reunion concert where these folk groups have to get back together again and you know the great thing is that i got a chance to in the research for this do a lot of you know I, I had to go back and listen to a lot of the the albums and folk singers that I used to listen to back in the 60s because you know I actually did do a little folk singing myself but but the uh, <laughs> you did the, um, well yeah but I, I'm not gonna go into that now yeah yeah okay because uh, we we just don't have the time but, yeah um, and I didn't ask I <laughs> <laughs> sorry it would look like it was too much <laughs> Sorry. Would have been really interesting. <laughs> sorry. Would have been really interesting. I'm sorry. But I... anyway, I listened to all these groups, and I and I have to say that you know at the top of the list uh, was Bob Dylan back in the '60s. He was like, he's, huh? here's a guy. You know, he he wrote some of the great folk anthems, and yes. I and I actually got a chance to meet Bob Dylan. Tr when? True story. 1965 in Toronto, back when he was touring. Uh, and and still just kind of getting into the electric thing. So right. he would do half the concert. He would do acoustic, just his guitar and harmonica, and then he would kind of plug in and go electric in the second half of the concert. To and, and 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 back then he was he was getting booed a lot by the the folk fanatics who didn't like the change. It wasn't pure to them. But yeah. I had uh, I had I, I, my uncle actually used to manage the group that became his backup group at the time was known as the Hawks mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they later became known as the band. Mm -hmm. But back then uh, they were the Hawks so we got to go to the concert he invited me we got to go backstage 
to meet Dylan. And this is a big thing for me because, the, I mean, to this day, he's like the, he's like the icon in the music business, and I, I was so nervous about it. And back then, especially in Toronto, uh, you know, you, anywhere you went, you had to wear, like, a suit. You wore a suit. You just wore a suit. Right. That's what you did. That's what people did when they went, and, you know, to see any kind of show or talk shows. They would wear suits. Yeah. Uh, they wore suits to, to hockey games. Right, right. <laughs> On a Saturday night, look at a picture at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1965. You'll the see players every, wore suits suit. and ties, I understand. It was just a thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I put on my suit, and unfortunately, you know, this was a suit I happened to be bar mitzvahed in, I think. It was, uh, <laughs> it was the only suit I had. Uh -huh. uh, so it was a little short, and I wasn't looking my best. I was showing far too much cuff, uh, you know, with, with cuff links that I got when I was a kid. They right. were like, you know, howdy doody. Cufflinks. It was a, it was a, it was a bad look. I put on my reversible vest, and I we got invited backstage, to meet Bob Dylan. And my uncle called me over, and, and he said, uh, Bob, this is my nephew uh, Eugene Levy. This is uh, Bob Dylan. And I, I extended my hand, for a handshake, and I saw him go down and look at my cufflink, and. You know, they then I got nervous, and his eyes kind of opened a little bit too. And, and right. to compensate, I kind of squeezed his hand a little too tight in the handshake. You know, <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and if you're a musician, or if you're just anybody who really uh, likes the total use of your fingers, <laughs> it's not a good thing. No, no. So he kind of, uh, and, and I said to him, and this this is a line that has haunted me for for 35 years. I actually said to him, "Great first half, Bob." <laughs> And great first half Bob. I mean, th there's a choice of words. Number one, great, and the fact that I called him Bob. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, looking the way I did. Right. And he stared at me. Right. Expressionless. Right. And I could see him thinking, why are these intermissions so damn long? Right. I can well, see that in his Why eyes. is this horrible person here with really? me? Yeah. And that was the thing, and I had my moment and I blew it. And I understand you met him once, too. I did meet him. I met him uh, recently. I met him like nine months ago, and I saw him backstage, and uh, he looked at me and he said, I know you from the TV. <laughs> That's what he said. And then I was escorted out. Well, at least, some... at least he spoke to you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get a chance to embarrass myself. Oh, but that's a whole other story. Right. Uh, we have a clip here from A Mighty Wind. I want to make sure we get to this. What do we need to know to like well, this? Well, we, we just need understand. to know that this, uh, the group that uh, Catherine, uh, Catherine O'Hara and I play are, are called Mitch and Mickey. And we, we were a big icon uh, back in the 60s, a big folk duo, sold a lot of records. Now we're back for a reunion, and we're kind of reminiscing about the way life used to be. And, and my character's had, um, well, he's... He hasn't been well uh, for 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 many years. Um, um, it's been a, been a tough uh, tough go for uh, for old Mitch, but they're uh, they're they're back together, just about to go on, and now I guess kind of reminiscing a little okay, bit. Okay, let's take a look at this clip from a mighty wind. I was flashing back uh, to the rush of adrenaline we used to get uh, arriving at the concert hall, having stagehands uh, saying, "Good show, Mitch. Uh, good luck." Mickey tonight and we wait backstage hearing the crowd chanting Mickey, Mickey, Mitch, Mitch. Oh. Uh, walking out into the spot, <laughs> the sound of the crowd uh, cheering the decibel level. For me it was just watching you because I couldn't think about me actually being up there. But watching you I look forward to that, Mitch. He's a funny character. <laughs> the eyes. It's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. Bringing Down the House is now playing, of course, A Mighty Wind opens next uh, Wednesday in Select Cities. Eugene Levy, always a thrill to have you on the program. Thank you for being here. We'll be right back with the Mooney Suzuki. Stick around. Everybody, New York City is the home of my next guest. They're here tonight with a song from their latest album, Electric Sweat. Please welcome the Mooney Suzuki. The Mooney Suzuki, everybody, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Stick around.
Yeah, and they were great. The Mooney Suzuki Electric Sweat. You can check that out. I want to thank all my guests tonight. Stay tuned for Last Call with Carson Daly, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.